I'm David Rundle. Uh, I'm a lecturer in history and I teach on the first year early modern European course and also a range of graduate courses including research methods and approaches to social and cultural history. What I look at is how ideas spread across Europe. Uh, so what interests me is in the culture of manuscripts and the culture of print, so 15th and early 16th century. How do ideas which develop in one locale, I say locale rather than one country, uh, transfer to other locales, other places within the shared civilization of Christendom, of Western Europe in that period. I hope that in the teaching I'm going to do here that I'm going to be able to infuse other members of our community, undergraduate and graduate members of the community, with the excitement of old technologies. But when we teach, we use uh, video, hello, we use um, uh, uh, PowerPoint, we use data projectors, we use in our research a whole range of uh, computer-based uh, uh, searching and uh, researching methods. Um, we need to recognize that those are living alongside, rather than placing old technologies, and that there's a lot that we can learn from those old technologies. I mean books. I mean books which are handwritten and books which are early printed books. And what they can tell us, the way they can open up to us that culture in which they're produced. The University of Essex is in a really great position because of the riches of the Albert Sloman Library. And in particular, one of its collections, the Samuel Harsnett collection. Now Samuel Harsnett was a Colchester boy. He went to Cambridge, nobody's perfect, and then went on to be a Bishop of Chichester, Norwich, and eventually Archbishop of York. He died in 1631. He left his library to Colchester, to the town of Colchester. It was kept for many years in the castle, and recently it was moved for safekeeping into the Sloman collection here in the university. That collection has some really interesting books, and to demonstrate to you what the, the interest of them. I have one book here with me uh, today. Um, as you can see, a fairly hefty volume. Um, its binding has been partially replaced down the sides, but uh, the front and back both have a style of blind stamped binding, stamping on various tools which is a late 15th and 16th century style. This is a 16th century, probably from Oxford. Um, the book itself is a, in itself a humanist book. As I said, my interest is in the Renaissance and its intellectual history, so particularly in the history of humanism. And one of the key figures for that is Erasmus. This is Erasmus's edition of the church father, Augustine, printed by uh, Erasmus's favorite printer in Northern Europe, Johannes Froben, at Basel in 1529. So what we've got here is a 1529 printed book, which is also bound in the 16th century. I've already made one modern mistake with the book. I showed it to you by opening it near the front. That's not how it would have happened in the 16th century. If you look on the back, you can see we've got these clasps. Those clasps would have been attached. We've now lost pieces of leather which would have come across and been attached here and would have clipped onto this. That means to open it, you'd have to flick those open and then opened it from the back. So you'd see the index before you'd see the text. The other thing is we would imagine, and remember the second mistake I made was I showed you the spine. The spine for us is what you show on the um, bookcase facing out. The evidence here, and this might be difficult to see, but just in the middle of the edge of the pages here is the word Augustinus. Augustine, the author of the work, demonstrating that this sat on the shelf on the back of the bookcase. That's the front.
That's the way it looked at. But that's not all. More interesting is the fact that books are often made from older books, particularly in a period of such change as the 16th century, when manuscripts are being replaced by printed books, and also Reformation changes mean that some old books are being destroyed. And some end up being reused. So what you've got here at the front of the book, and you've got a similar one at the back, is what we call a paste down. It's been a little bit pasted down. But it's a manuscript paste down to assist the strength of the binding taken from what must be a manuscript which had already been ripped up. And as you can see, we've got the text in two columns, early 13th century, with around it a commentary in a set of different hands. There's one hand here, another hand here, and then a much later 15th century hand at the bottom here, demonstrating the continual use of that book until the early 16th century, when it was decided not to be fit for purpose anymore, thrown out, torn up, and then used inside the new technology of the printed book.